hi guys we're doing the live stream now so tune in we're gonna go live with the um voice america so just in, give me a minute here and we'll kick it in okay Are we ready, Matt? There? Yep, we've got 30 seconds and we'll get started. Oh, okay. All right, 10 seconds here. Elizabeth, I'm going to go ahead and send the feed your way. Have a good show. Okay, thanks, Matt. Staff and management. Welcome to the Infinite Human Talk Show with Elizabeth Monroy. Over the next hour, you'll learn how you can become part of the new consciousness renaissance by evolving yourself physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially, and socially to embrace your true divine infinite nature and become an infinite human and co-creator of the new infinite earth. Now, here is your host, Elizabeth Monroy. Hello, you divine, infinite human beings, you're all that is, ever has been, and ever, ever, ever shall be. And thank you so much for joining me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have an exciting show wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening here in Malta. And we have Sasha Stone with us, who I consider to be a visionary, and he's, we're going to discuss with him. Um, he's very inspiring. Um a uh, passionate man who's going to talk about uh, his visions for a new earth. And I was fortunate enough to be able to actually visit him in Bacalar at his um, home and his compound there. And I was, I spent Christmas with him, which was really wonderful because I'm a black sheep of the family and I hadn't been invited anywhere for Christmas in a long time. And I met a lot of very precious souls, very dedicated people uh, that just kind of, he, he kind of magnetizes and brings uh, the, the right people into him. So I was really, really um, very um, honored and privileged to have spent uh, that time with him. And one of the first things I noticed about him was that he just sat down and listened to me. I mean, he was a, he's a very busy man and he just sat there and listened to me for, you know, for, for almost an hour and was really interested in what I had to say. And one of the things uh, I discussed with him is um, something that my first spiritual teacher said is that the uh, the men, my, my first spiritual teacher was an old army sergeant, ex army sergeant, not your typical spiritual teacher. And he said, it's the men that messed the planet up and it's the women who are going to fix it. And I talked about how the divine feminine is now going to be leading the planet. And I actually thought I would be in Mexico, but as it turns out, I am here in this palace that I, uh, that I have uh, come into my being in Malta. And uh, the, um, if anyone knows about Malta is probably one of the most powerful places on the planet is actually the point where all the software programs would you if you would call it that where the template of of our earth comes together and where the goddesses if you travel around here there's nothing but goddesses hence my you can't see me now but i'm i'm dressed as a goddess but hence um the goddesses are returning now. We are taking back this planet. It was taken away from the goddess energy. And the goddesses knew how to maintain this certain frequency at this, at these intersections of ley lines, dragon nodes. So it is a very powerful place and it is a time to really raise the frequency of the planet, which is one of the things that I'm doing. So I want to just kind of put things in context before I bring Sasha on. I know you're all really looking forward to talking to him, but we've been talking about the two different 
timelines or the two different, since there really is no time, the flash sequences and the geometric patterns of the descending Fibonacci spiral, which corresponds to what the Hopi prophecy talked to in the prophecy rock, uh, you know, the, the um, line that basically goes nowhere, the line of the two hearted people who worship technology and have little respects for mother earth, mother nature and, and, and organic creation. And that of the one-hearted people that continues into eternity, and that is the Cristala spiral. And many of you have been asking me, well, how do I get on the Cristala spiral? What do I do? What do I do? And um, we're, we're going to be having David Icke on uh, February 5th to talk about his book, The Dream. And I just read the last chapter in it, which is very interesting because he talks about how do we you know, escape the matrix or how do we get off of this overlay. Well, as I said before, the, the two overlays have parted. So really it's your choice. Everyone has free will. But the way his last sentence in his book, The Dream, is, you know, how do we uh, get back to infinity? And, and of course, everything I'm talking about is based on my book, The Infinite Human. So it kind of picks up where he asked that question. And his his answer was to 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 wake up from the dream. And hence his book, The Dream. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to, you know, take uh, uh, still to thunder, but we'll be talking about that. And so I think one of the best ways, and I know a lot of spiritual people, especially that understand, you know, Ashiana Dean's mechanics, which I think are one of the highest disclosures on the planet, that's really what was supposed to be in the Holy Bible that was taken out. It's all the good stuff. And she talks about, you know, the, the highest level of disclosure and I think for us, what we need to do is stop just thinking about ascension or how we're going to get out of the matrix or how we're going to, you know, to, to escape and start living. And I listened to, I've listened to a lot of um, Sasha's stuff. And one of the things, one of his videos he just said was that he lives very passionately. And, and I, I, I saw that when I was with him and he's visionary. And I think we need to stop just hypothesizing and, and, and being so afraid that we might mess up. And I know, I know Sasha's received a lot of criticism. I got it on some of my threads, you know, and, you know, I too was a little skeptical, but when I visited him, I saw Kiki, you know, come up to him and, and he put his arm around her and I just knew he was a very humble, very sincere person. And I think we could learn a lot just listening to him him because he is not afraid to just get out there. And of course, we're all perfect in our own imperfect ways. And we're all learning and we're growing and we're co-creating together this new earth. And that's the job at hand. You know, we're not just waiting around for someone else to do it for us or for someone, you know, to tell us what to do, because that's the old program. We have to get out there and connect with that divine infinite spark within us. So before I bring him on, just take a minute to just go inside wherever you are. If you're driving, you can just still yourself just for a minute, breathing in the two most powerful words that were ever uttered. I am and exhale infinite, infinite, infinite. And breathing in, I am infinite love, love, love. I am infinite truth, truth. Truth. And one more time, feeling that divine spark, spark, ignite within your heart of hearts. I am infinite source, source, source. And I'll just say, only take what resonates from me, from any of my guests. But, um, you know, here we have the wonderful Sasha Stone. Oh. Um, Welcome, 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 Sasha. So nice to have you here. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you again. Again, yes. So uh, I just really have uh, seen you as a man of vision, which is why I wanted to um, bring you on and just hear uh, whatever you care to share about the visions, because I know they're just amazing, you know, and I always believe don't kill the dreamer. So I'd like to hear all your dreams. Right. So let, let's um, just thank you for your very kind introduction, um, lovely words, and a nice, li nice frequency that you set. Um, but I, I just want to discuss the, um, the 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 more nefarious element. You 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 graciously said that uh, 
I'm under a great deal of attack and uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's just look at that before we go into the light. Let's look at what's in the basement sure. because I think that that's an important way of having a clean journey. In the first instance, um, any detractors of mine um, out there, and I'm not too familiar with that because I don't get criticism. I see thousands of comments a day and they're generally very loving. The, the negative comments that I get to see are, are bots and things that are AI infused bots in social media. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't uh, get criticism. And that's because I have a very clean and enlightened audience now, which I've cultivated over many years. So we've had a block, ban, delete uh, policy over the last few years. I've got a lot of pe people in my ecosystem, a lot of stuff. And we've had a very sensible um, method of dealing with low frequencies, block, ban, delete. Anyone enters into the hallowed temple of truth uh, in, in, and in my ecosystem needs to come in with a bit of grace. If not, out. Thank you very much. Leave your poo at the door and don't come and lay black pebbles at our feet because we're not interested. We're on a journey. It's a noble journey. It's a kind, gracious journey. So two things. One, what is the standing of any of those individuals who uh, are naysayers or criticize me or um, slander me? What is their standing? Number one, you have to look at that before you perpetuate the cycle of what they're saying. Who are they? Chinese whispers, paid agents, trolls, ignominious little tits with small penises in the basement. Uh, if there's all sorts of humans that feel the need to castigate, to malign, to slander, to destroy the noble path of others. But let's look at who are they? Are they worth even speaking to or bringing into the fray? Um, that's essentially, to my mind, the key piece. Secondly, um, is there a single thing that I say or do that is worthy of criticism? No, there isn't. It's the same thing with David Icke. I dare say it's the same thing with you. So what have I actually done or actually said or actually written that is worthy of slander, of criticism, and of crushing judgment? Nothing. I know that. I know for how long I've been walking this walk. So those are the two things. What is the standing of the people criticizing? And what in what I do or say can you possibly disagree with? That's the other thing. And you see, if you apply the real metric of pure truth to either of these equations, you will know that there is nothing there that is worthy of criticizing. So therefore, we need to now move beyond the black and white checkerboard. In the truth movement, we need to stop. Anyone who criticizes anything or anyone is standing outside of grace. Judgment is a sin. It's a crime. It is actually the, the atom seed or the the Achilles heel of, of enlightenment, because judgment is the atom seed of goodness of evil. It starts the whispering, it starts the shadow land, the shadow boxing, the doubt, all of that stuff. So I think it's really important, Elizabeth, that we look at that, the metric of shadows, the metric of low frequency individuals. Now let's have the conversation worthy of enlightenment and of an enlightenment. And, and I, I just want to say two things in response to that. Um, I think the first thing is, and you mentioned David, of course, who was, I call him the godfather of truth who went through hell and he paved the way and you paved the way. And of course, I, you're right. I mean, I, as soon as anyone starts to speak the truth, the truth frequency, they are attacked. And it's just, it's a planned thing. And I think it's important because we pave the way. It takes courage. And I think, I really think we're leaders that create leaders. We don't need followers anymore. So what we, what we need to do is say, you know, you're not going to please everybody. And you just don't even put your attention there. You don't pay with your attention, you know? And the second thing is I do believe in discernment. I think we've all been learning that, uh, with this red pill enema that we've been going through these past three years. And that's important, but I think we're getting to the point now where truth is a frequency. And as we assimilate our 12 strands of DNA, we begin to know this, the Emerald records. We know the true history of our planet. We, we know we can tell what truth is, but we still within the truthers, we're kind of nitpicking each other and we need to find that unity so we can move together and co-create a new earth. Indeed. So, But unity is not out there. And that's the point. It's inside unity us. does not yes. live out there. It will never descend from the clouds. Unity is a state of serendipity or peaceableness within the broken hemispheres of your own life in the living moment. And when everyone gets that peace, now we're understanding pure truth. Now we're understanding true form and pure truth, which is I need to deal with my shit. Therefore, I must not judge, 
castigate, slander, or critique anything ever, ever, if something is in honor. Now, when you're, when you're looking at public officials and technocrats and politicians and people out there, intermediaries, third-party interventionists, yes, by all means, go for them. Get rid of them. Clear them out. You can judge them. I say there's a difference between judging a, uh, a party, a, a politician, forgive me, and judging a living man. You should never judge a living man. But of course, a politician is an artificial construct. They've been put in between us and the citadel, you know, and so they're third party functionaries. And the third party is the banker, the priest, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the person that, that, that stands between us and our genius, between us and our redemption, between us and our money, between us and our health when it comes to doctors. Government itself mm -hmm. is the ultimate third party intervention, pure satanic construct, satanic as in Saturnian. So government is the extension of the Roman Catholic Church, which was the technology that destroyed the true genesis of the mystical traditions of all religion and conjured them into religious orders, which became mind control technologies, which simply, A, cult programmed us with the wrong narrative, secondly, tithed and taxed us and penalized us. So that's all that government is. Everything that issues off government, academia issues off government. It's rotten to the core. It's academia, my friends, that delivered unto us human mRNA intervention and this Holocaust happening in human blood, direct result of academia, doctors and scientists and their dirty little white papers or signed off by Princeton and Oxbridge and so on. So it's government is academia and media as well. We have to rid ourselves of all of this intervention to get back to that true form or that pure okay truth. so that you know that brings us to the whole new earth because i see so many people saying yeah the cabal let's take them down and you know the truth is it is all just like the hopi prophecy timeline it is crumbling the bank systems are crumbling the governments are crumbling the health care is weaponized you can't even use it anymore the education indoctrination all these systems are crumbling so and everyone's like yay but what even the internet, which is created by DARPA, which we're using right now, okay, that you know is part of the finite old earth systems. We need to get busy and yeah. start creating alternatives. And right. then the last thing I'll say, and then I'll let you take it with your visions, but I believe that you know, the yogis call it God realization. And what is God? God is everything. God is all that is, you know, God is infinite. I call it infinite because, and I wrote about that in my book. Uh, I'm a daughter of a preacher, so I don't like the word God, <laughs> you know, but what happens is when you begin to truly awaken from the dream, you realize the truth. And the truth is we are all one. There is, the, and we begin to tap into, I always say, go to infinite source within. And as we all do that, then we can delight in the differences between us all because everyone is still kind of wanting us all to believe the same thing and when you do that you have a cult and that's not what it is being true ascension or god realization you are all like snowflakes very different yet all water which is the same oneness of all things so i think that's going to be the foundation the true foundation for the new infinite earth as i call it quite so well i exactly right i mean you seem to be possessed of that vision of the new earth that is <laughs> predicated essentially on unity consciousness. And again, unity consciousness can only um, be a reality when we've addressed the broken hemispheres within each of our lives. And that can that comes down to the, the patriarchal and the matriarchal elements, the feminine and the masculine, the Shiva and the Shakti, and the broken hemisphere that exists between those two. You know, the degree to which I was suckled at my mother's tit, the degree to which I was um, uh, I was um, bullied by my father. So these two elements become also primary uh, foundational archetypal elements that each of us need to look at and resolve within ourselves because we all in that sense come from fractured and broken um, uh, beginnings. If you look at how children are born into hospitals with surgical blades cutting the umbilical and uh, mercury-infused light bulbs in the hospital and then being pulled out and smacked on the on the bum until you squawk mm -hmm. and oftentimes nowadays being pulled out by cesarean section so you miss the activated biome um, of traveling through the birth canal there are all sorts of horrendous uh, horrific um, 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 impediments now to being born a luminescent human being 
So we are already fractured at birth in so, so, so many ways. And then it's a, it, it's how, how we, we come into this world hyperdimensional, multidimensional, complete superluminal geniuses if we didn't get programmed and kelp programmed from day one by mothers and fathers and uncles and aunts, we would move with, by the age of three, we'd all be playing uh, uh, Mozart and, and, and Chopin. We'd all be able to speak 12 languages. Actually, we'd, we'd speak one universal language if we weren't mind fucked from birth. We would be speaking telepathy. And if when we get that piece, start to bring souls into this world directly from the heavenly realms and allow them to educate us in that sense and stop the cult programming and the impressioning and the imprinting. That's the first thing that we need to learn or unlearn. As far well, as well, what, what you just said was basically the first 22 chapters, of, no, 21 chapters of my book, The Infinite Human. I go through everything and you just stated like word for word. But the 22nd chapter, the last chapter is, it's all wrong. It's all fucked up. Let's do it different. And we have to know the problems. I agree. And, and we've been, most of us have really been, you know, shocked at learning how deep this rabbit hole goes. We have to know the problems, you know, like a good healer they know the problem so they can find the solution so they don't recreate the same shit over and over again but now we have to start launching ourselves into doing it different and you're right it begins within first and the basis for true ascension is to have that hair gamic union within because now the divine feminine is so powerful and i'm here where the knights the luciferian knights Templar stole it from the oh, goddess yeah. energy who oh, controlled yeah. it with their toning, with their, with their devotion. They controlled the frequency. And the first thing they did, and I went to the hypergeon the other day, which is this acoustic healing chambers. And it's a labyrinth that's under really Malta is just a mountaintop and they would tone. And then they, first thing the Luciferian Templar Knights did is throw a bunch of bodies and they call it a burial chamber. It's not a burial chamber, but they started doing their satanic rituals to pollute the ley lines and the, the, the template of the earth, which is now we're getting it back, but we have to bring that hair union because the, the, Women have had a really bad rap on this planet. I mean, the traumatization, the, 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 you know, the, the rape of the Sabine women is nothing. I mean, every culture has been invaded. Every Christic culture has been invaded by the Leviathan, you know, Anunnaki hybrids who have come in, whether they're the Vikings, you know, the Raiders, the, um, the true Israelites. We don't have true Israelites anymore. The, the Celtic cultures, they were all raided. The men were killed. The women were raped for their genetics to, to provide this 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 satanic spawn and and you know it's been very traumatic traumatic for everyone and that's what you're talking about we need to heal those those soul fragments those alternate identities we call them past lives but there's no time but we call them that we need to bring it back into wholeness or holiness that's the first thing and then when we can start creating something new and i i think we need to really get passionate about making it a new making it something different so get, get real excited about that <laughs> indeed indeed so what so what tell us a little bit about all the visions that you have because i've i've listened to some of them and they sound just amazing um you're going to have to be more pointed in your questions all right. I can't just enter into a repertoire like that is way too quantum uh because um, I'm, well, you know, I'm engaged in, in so many different uh, uh, um, areas. Okay. Of well, one of the things that I've heard you say that I really like, and unfortunately, I don't hear a lot of a lot of ascension people are just very much off into the the ideas, which are great. You know, we're all very philosophical. But you used to say, you, 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 I heard you say, you have to ground it in the soil. We have to till the soil. We have to have this connection. And I really believe that that, that our earth, our mother has chosen to ascend. So the more we can biosync with it. And actually when I, I spent time with you, but I also spent a lot of time in Cova with the real Mayans and they just have such a beautiful connection with our, our, our mother earth. And I think that's crucial uh, for for, for ascension and for evolvement, for the new agrarian kind of communities where you're really respecting our, our Mother Earth? Well, the, the, 
I was going to, early on, when I was going off riffing on Shiva and Shakti and opposite, I was building up towards something. And so I'll, I'll okay. go back to that. Okay, but please that was, do. What I was building toward was the when, when you were considering the realm of duality within which we were born and within which we live, uh, now it, it ultimately takes us to the shamanic impulse, uh, which is the intuitive impulse in us, or into the imperial or the intellectual uh, impulse that that governs the human soul. So the bifurcation psycho civilizationally can be seen to be white man's poison and um, and black man uh, or the black skin, brown skin, red skin, and yellow skin, the shamanic, the indigenous, the Aboriginal, and more or less you're looking at those primary types. The the white skin in that sense and in, in accordance with the Hopi prophecy and other prophecies went forth. Uh, with the element of fire and uh, in order to explore the dimension of fire, the transmutative, transformative element. And what did white skin or the white man do? The white man ultimately, courtesy of the Oppenheimer-Einstein um, covenant and Bohm covenant, ended up um, building nuclear bombs, thermonuclear bombs, and bringing about a catastrophic failure of the biosphere in that sense, a, a diabolical outcome. But white man also... Um, explored intellectualism, in, in explored systems. The Knights Templar that you alluded to that stemmed from Malta uh, where you are um, or had a, 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 have always had their ground zero in Malta um, started out in the 11th century, um, round about 1066 doomsday, that period of time, which was really the genesis point of the taxations and the tithing of the church, when when the priesthoods the uh, be, began to essentially compound their wickedness of um, forcing uh, people of the land to come into the citadel and render gold, render unto Caesar the gold and the the um, the tithes and the taxes. So that's what you you've got. Intellectualism um, was based on that on the tithing and the taxing and the registration of souls through the church system. Church became government. And that's that's the kind of, in a sense, the, the kingdom of the devil, which we're now seeking to exit. Um, when you talk about our you know, emergence into the new earth, it's really about how do we step away from registrations, bonds, spells, tithes, and taxes and penalties. That's what we're looking. Every good human in your audience is relating to that. We do not wish to be tithed or taxed or penalized or judged any longer by a system which in and of itself is draconian. And you quite rightly alluded to the fact that this is an off-world agenda, which it is. You talk about the draconian Orion uh, compact, which gave birth in the modern context to the Nazis in the 30s and the 40s through the invocation of the demonic realms through ritual uh, ceremony into uh, the temporal plane. And the rest of it is so-called history. The last 100 years, we can look over our shoulder and go, wow, since the time of Roosevelt, 1933, look at what's happened to this world. Everything has become weaponized. The innocence uh, the, the privilege, the prerogative, the First Nation peoples, the Aboriginal peoples of the world, and the whites are also First Nation peoples. You go back to the Saracens and the, uh, and the Celts and so on. The point is we've been overrun in the last 100 years by this Orion Draconian Nazi mythos. That's taken full containment of us. Why? Well, because at the subliminal level, at the level of the collective soul, we have clearly put out into the field of consciousness, into the field of expression, we have put out that we needed a bitter pill. We've needed to have a thrall of darkness and of contrast against which we can now define our superluminal celestine template and re-emerge through this darkness, this recent mm -hmm. dark chapter, re-emerge back into our superluminal state of grace. 
that's where we're at right now. It's all good as far as I'm concerned. Everything. Is well, good. yes, I think it's the most exciting time to be alive. And actually, a lot of my uh, disclosure originally, I, I now I get it myself, but um, it was kind of confirmed by um, Voyager 2 by Ashiana Dean. And her level of, uh, oh boy, her disclosure is really profound because actually the fall started 260 billion years ago when a parallel fallen matrix of, you know, Weez acts tried board a, a black hole into ours and then they began to mess with us and this draconian was one faction but there was also the elohim the highest of highs that fell and they began this whole war and they blew up the 12 stargate which sealed yeah. off this matrix so we became gay to fall and they allowed us to fall because they always had a fail safe and actually the i mean i just i'm a storyteller i'm a writer so i love this story because it's really a cool story because what's happened as of actually before but the whole 2012 end end of the world the mayan calendar was really the beginning because it was the end of the story because i think i told you when i first met you we're all just stories in the mind of god you know so these are all stories and we're the infinite knowing itself that's the truth and sometimes we want to you know we want a good uh you know villain in our in our drama you know every good film has a good a good villain so we have been falling and we have been constantly being parasited off of these parallel universes that have been trying to, with their artificial technology, it, pull our whole time matrix. And when I talk about a time matrix, I'm talking about five harmonic universes, not just, you know, our, our galaxy or our planet into theirs. But the failsafe program, which was hosted, this is really cool, from the Aquarius Okay, Aquarian, which is a whole nother time matrix and another Akash in another area, is pulling us back up. And it's this crystal, crystal river, um, crystal spiral, and the crystal river host that is bringing us back into alignment. And the false reset, you know, they were saying we're resetting to AI, was just the bad copy they were trying to shove down our throats during lockdown. But the true, the true reset is resetting to divine infinite source within us. And that's why people are starting to awaken. That's why people that haven't been, you know, vax, I can say that here, vaccinated <laughs> on Voice America, I can say that vaccinated or they haven't been hooked up to the 5G high mind. You know, they're starting to feel this, uh, this ascending energy because it's pulling us back into alignment. That's why I know, I know everyone. And I think I said it to you when I first met you, you know, you bring a bunch of people together in a new community with all their problems, but it's going to work because everyone is healing re in earth. There's many earths. There's Tara Gaia. There's Aurora earth. Earth, there's there's earth the earth in andromeda and it's all coming back together as are we bringing our collective identities back again we're remembering and the proof is in the pudding so if you're starting to remember your past lives it means you're healing because it's all mk ultra mind control that's happened over you know millions of years so yeah it's 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 galactic mind control i mean mm -hmm. project monarch is just a very very recent um codified um iteration of cult programming which is what the religions and the cultures and the babylonian the the the, the frac the fractured um humankind as it went into this um into this huge kind of diaspora and ended up with the multiplicity of different genomic expressions and different cultures, different civilizational wheels, all of us reflective on Earth of what's going on in the ethers. In the, you know, galactic wars are what play out at the microcosmic level on Earth. And that's the end of it. So the net net result is that the human being today is the um, is the galactic hybrid. Every single one of us is the galactic yes. hybrid, and we're all codified by now. We've all been transfected as well by linguistic wave genetics. We are all of us draconian and Arcturian and Andromedan and uh, Syrian and Orion and Venusian, and we could name 50-plus different galactic genomic expressions which make mm -hmm. up a holographic human uh, so-called yes. DNA yes. mRNA story. Now, now, knowing that that's what we are in the temporal material sense. How about looking at what we are in the true sense of the atom seed of what makes a human, what makes a, what makes you and I, it is clearly the fact that we have a complete clear channel. We are intrinsically 
hardwired with the Jacob's Ladder. We have a, a, a hotline to source. Every single one of us humans. That cannot be the said to the same for the Draconian Reptilians or the Orions or the Syrians or the Zeta Reticulans. They do not have a clear channel to source. They are foundationally parasitic in that sense. They need to come back through us to find their way back home. That's where the splicing and dicing and abductions and, and all the rest of it comes in. But there is a point at which we need to recognize that the empathic wave that comes out of the actualized heart can actually transmit that intelligence. We don't need to parasite off something in order to live any longer. That's the mm -hmm. real awakening. We don't mm -hmm. need to eat flesh beyond a certain point. We don't even need to breathe oxygen. We don't need to drink mm -hmm. water. We just need to be able to receive the codifications in light. And that's where we're headed. The homo sapien sapien moving to homo luminous. It's all about well, our capacity to explode into the empathic waveform, the most shareable wave in known to science and become unified, but still be able to function as a discrete uh, individual at the same time, time, he said, inverted commas. And, and I think we're saying, you know, very similar things in my perspective. Of course, I call it infinite humans, you know, because we're infinite, but we're yes. in a human form. And we all had at that at that time to be an embodiment of, of the infinite. There's many different embodiments. But when you are more in a physicality, not a luminous body, let's say you have a 12 strands of DNA, which is the connection directly to source, which we have been downgraded. And through a lot of hybridization and interbreeding. So the truth is we are Anunnaki, we are draconian, we have all that in our genome. And that and but it's a beautiful thing, because although we may have come from very high, high densities, you know, from very high genetics, from uh, alternate the time matrixes, and with this purity, we have learn so much in this fall and you know when we as we return home we are bringing back these stories you know i i, I liken it to joseph campbell who did such a good job with the mythic oh, yeah. story structure and you know we're coming back with the elixir of life we're coming back to share it with our our, our true star family because we've learned so much and we've know what a shadow is we know what it's like to have a shadow self and to oh, yeah. to, to to blend it to integrate it to alchemize it and and so it, it, I think it's a beautiful time. I know it's difficult for many. And I, I hear you. I, I, I hear your emails, your telepathy emails. I hear you, but you know, it's worth it. It's worth the journey because it's, it's just, you're going to be so much more than you were when you, when you left, when you set out on it, you know, when you left home. <laughs> Indeed. I, I would suggest that just to add to what you said, you're talking about um, downgrading and us being downgraded. That was entirely true, but only in a sense, because the downgrading was also the beneficence, was also the benediction that was being graced to us in this temporal void. You only downgrade, so to speak, in order to go deeper into the subterranean depth so that you can then explore and express and, and see, cast light into that depth and then bring back the knowing. We are, each of us, even murderers and psychopaths are acting as the point of absolution for, the, for, the, for source consciousness. So every one of us in the temporal void that are out there expressing and exploring and inquiring and participating in this incredible uh, tapestry of creation, each of us are divinely appointed and anointed in what we're doing uh, because we are helping to also redeem and absolve ever lower um, uh, scales of, of expression into higher incarnation. And that's why, you know, I've been trying to explain the mechanics of ritual sacrifice in a way that makes sense that the, 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 the sacrificial lamb is not the victim. The sacrificial lamb is the one at the soul level in control of that covenant is the one that is bringing the absolution, the redemption and planting the seed of light in the heart of darkness. So that there, there is an exchange going on. Everything is part of that exchange in that sense, hard for binarized uh, psycho emotionally reactive human beings to get it rather like those trolling factions I was talking about at the front of this program, we have to now start to make a, a distinction between the idiot human that is just stuck in a binary ping pong game of anger and love and love and hate and black and white people who want to still oscillate into that idiot and demonic frequency 
polarity and duality will stay in that, but you're going to be space dust. You're literally heading towards mm -hmm. space dust because you, <laughs> you, are, you are the motherfuckers who rolled up your sleeves and took the fucking vaccines and then started mm. transfecting everyone else on the planet and mm. creating a floor of doom for everyone because you failed to stand in your intuitive grounding, your mm. intuitive wisdom, where your body was screaming and saying, no, you do not allow for the intervention of a stainless steel needle pumping synthetic molecules into the blood. You don't do that. You listen to your hook-nosed grandmother in the caravan in the valley, and she's telling you, drink lemon, citric acid, have, you know, honey, eat leaves off trees. There's a thousand different ways of dealing with SARS, COVID symptoms. Then rolling your sleeve up and listening to your idiot uh, government or your idiot public health uh, official. So we collectively were the ones who abnegated our wisdom flame, abnegated our conscience, and then surrendered to the devil, the mark of the beast. That has brought about the Saturnian thrall. People like me have been screaming about that for a quarter of a century. And I dare say you have as well. It's a deep frustration, but now we need to look and say there are certain elements within the human family that are irredeemable, absolutely irredeemable. And those Individuals are the ones who are casting judgment and are having opinions and still spitting or dribbling their opinions onto social media, anywhere at all. There is no longer time for judgment. We have to see that which self-exists, self-reveals, self-fulfills and participate in this quantum upshift or perish one or the other. Well, you know, you said a, a mouthful there, and I think it's really tying uh, tying things up to where I'm at and where many of us are at right now because for me I've been of service for <laughs> I've been around a while and for and I try uh, with my husband we traveled all over the states giving health care to you know the Native Americans who were lost the you know yeah. poor blacks the, the 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 Mormons were the worst the Mexican immigrants you know and likewise and I just did a book tour last year and almost died from all the 5G I had to go into the five to the infrared saunas every day just to yeah it's, it's terrible but i did it because it was the point that we talked about on the show uh, in november yeah. when eon parks was here of the two spirals parting and everyone has free will and there will be those who will to the bitter end want to play that ping pong game of duality and they're always going to see something outside of themselves and they're always going to want to fight off of that and that's their right and like you said they'll do it till their space dust and then they'll return back to source in their purity but yeah. I don't want to do it anymore. I've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. I am burnt it. You know, I am so tired of that. And you know, that's the, and I, I was living before in Sicily, the magic triangle. That's when you ascend above duality, you become the alchemist and you bring that, like you said, you know, whether you're, you've been the martyr, you've been the sacrificial limb, you played all those roles. Uh, and I just say uh, part of it, well, I'll just say, David, I, I heard him say once, how do you get out of the matrix? He goes, stop identifying with the finite. And I see that as the divine storyteller. You know, we've been, we've been writing all these stories for ourselves, but stop identifying with these characters. Like, you know, I'm this person, I'm, 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 I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, I'm an Indian chief, you know, I'm a woman, I'm a man. We have to start identifying with the infinite within all things. And then and, and are we running out of time here? No, we're doing okay. So that's how you how you get, you know, out of it. And that's where we're going, I think. And those of us that are wanting this, and I can tell you are, we want to write a new story. And that brings me to the new earth. We want to do it different. And those are the people that need to, we're, we're all feeling this. I, I'm you know, taking the temperature from, you know, all over. I mean, I speak different languages. I'm with people from all walks of life and those are getting tired of the system. And it comes from an inner desire to do it different, you know, to, to come together in creation, oh, not, yeah. you know, in creation, not being told what to do, but letting it create from your soul, come from your soul. Quite so. Could, can't, can't agree more with you. <laughs> so well yeah, I, I i i have you down as a man of visions and you are you have such wonderful ideas Do, what would you what, what let's just talk you know because i i love talking to you it's very you know 
uh, uh, stimulating. But what would you, what are some visions that people could, okay, let me, let me say my visions. I think we need to come together just back in simplicity. I think America right now is, you know, has led the world as an American, you know, we've been very wealthy and we've led the world, unfortunately, unbeknownst to us by working for corporations, by paying taxes that supported a one, you know, the new world order, the one world order military by invading countries, all this and the karma. And, and we, took the land from the indigenous people and brought in slaves to plant tobacco, as I talked about last week. So, you know, there's a lot of karma there and we really need to just start, get back to simplicity. I think that's, and, and connecting within and bonding with, with nature and getting, you know, having relationships, multidimensional relationships and being not just in screens, but eyeball to eyeball with, with our brethren, you know? So that's some of the things that I wrote about that people are the best currency. People are the gold on this planet, you know, souls, we, this exchange of energy you have. And, and I believe in my heart, I believe so much that we are all divine puzzle pieces with unique soul missions and the answers. We all have the answers to each other's problems. And as we come together, we're creating this divine infinite puzzle that is that is laying the true template you know the true foundation for a whole new way of doing it in alignment with infinite god source that's the only rule it has to be in alignment with the law of one you have to respect others you have to um you know don't screw you know don't parasite off of someone don't screw your your neighbor you know just just uh you know co-create in harmony and oneness and i think we want, most of us are wanting that. We're sick of the other story. Well, there's two forms of human. There, there are those that uh, love and wish to be loved, and there are those who are parasites and need to live off stolen fire, Promethean fire, and they parasite off other human beings. Again, those that judge and those do not judge. Those that create, affirm, and expand, and those that sit in the basement throwing stones at others. So those are two kinds of humans, and uh, the... The essential um, mission right now has to be a return to the soil. If people don't get that, they're beyond recall. You have to now leave Sodom and Gomorrah. You have to up, uh, upshift your life. You've got to take your family, take your children, um, sell your um, shackle, whatever it is, in Sodom and Gomorrah and get the hell out, a return to the sacred soil. That is the only way you survive what is coming. Or you become an AI-infused, digitized, smart city victim for life, which is what you're choosing, apparently, if you stay in that job, if you continue to allow yourself and your kin to be mind-fucked by cult programming coming out of MSNBC. And if you want to continue to take the knee and render coin unto Caesar, you will die to Caesar's blade. That's the way it will work now. So we've got a very little time left to be able to convene a relationship with the sacred soil. So the new earth is all about a revivification of and a reconvention of the relationship between the sons and daughters of God and the living soil. Love you, so I, I agree with that. And I really do, I, I mean, I don't believe it. I, I feel it. I've experienced it. There are certain areas that are very, like Malta, the frequencies are so high. I mean, it's just dizzy since I've been here a little over a week and, and the frequencies are just so high and, and people are happy. They're in a good mood. I'm like, what's wrong with you? You're so happy, you know, but where you go some places, say in America, you know, where the 5G, the frequencies are so low. It's just, people are just like, they never smile. They're walking around. And so I do think if you're feeling the need to move or you're feeling called to certain areas, that's your inner voice. You need to really, at this time, listen to it because there are areas that are on the ascending crystalla spiral and there are those on the descending. So, um, well, okay. So thank you so much. Uh, uh, we're, I'm going to wrap it up here in a minute, Sasha. Thank you. And could you tell a little bit more about how we, cause this is mostly audio, um, how, people can find out more and get in touch with you and, you know, yeah, sure. sure. I, I just thank you for, I thank you for raising the conversation about, and you began an hour ago speaking about the, the distinction between the Fibonacci and the, the, the dissension and the ascension and the crystal spiral dynamic. And that's huge. And that's a really important piece that most people don't get. So if you don't mind in closing, I would just like to underscore 
what you raised because I think it's so, so important. The Fibonacci so-called golden mean principle, the golden principle, all of that Masonic bullshit is something which um, in mathematical terms and in esoteric terms transcribed the whole of the last era of false light that we are now emerging from. All of the ancient citadels and the you know Romanesque and Greco uh, cityscapes were designed in accordance with those mathematical principles. And indeed, when you look at the Parthenon, when you look at some of these amazing architectural edifices, and you look at the uh, beauty of a, uh, a perfect seashell, or even the way in which the human biology emerged in conformity to that Fibonacci ratio premised mathematics. It is true, there is a great deal of beauty in it, but it's an enchantment. It's a false light enchantment. The real beauty, the luminant, the super luminal, a quantum uh, beauty is to be had when we break out of that principle, the golden mean, the golden principle, because that in a sense was a mathematical formula that circumscribed heaven on earth, but in a false light matrix. So it wasn't real. The real Wait, is yeah. where, we, where we step into the, into the crystal spiral dynamics and we exit that containment principle and move into the superluminal state. So this becomes very abstract, very esoteric for a lot of people. Some people will absolutely get it. But there is a huge distinction between Fibonacci ratio and crystal spiral dynamics. It is the difference. And, but what happened was that, that was hacking into our organic. We had the crystal spiral and it hacked into our holo, divine holographic template. And it has been overlaid, which hence the duality that we've had for so long, you know, but now it has been removed. Now those that are still asleep in the dream as, as, as David, Ike would say, you know, they're just, listening to their Siri telling them what to do. I, I do that sometimes too. Okay. <laughs> but you know, get, getting, being told what to do, they're following that spiral down to, to the death. Yes. But now but that's been a, like this inky and nail overlay that yeah. has, that has squashed ours. And that's yeah. why nature, you know, adheres to it because it's been so prevalent. It has actually, it's the virus that has encroached on our own natural way. And that, and the Fibonacci destroys that which comes after it. Cristalla, like source, nothing is ever lost, you yeah. know? So, so we're realigning with that and we're going to see some amazing things happen. Also, we had, um, I'm not sure if you're, you're familiar with the Tartarian, um, you know, technology and architecture, which I think is going to come. I've been, I believe I've been one of the lead voices in the world in the last, certainly the last two years out there. I've done literally hundreds of broadcasts and lectures. Um, I'm not hundreds of lectures, but I've done some seminal lectures, which are very intense. And I've been speaking uh, very much to the mathematics of phase conjugation and uh, the paramagnetic and dielectric forces at work in Tatarian technology. In fact, I've gone so far as to start building out a huge project here, uh, predicated okay. entirely on a revivification or restoration of that um, old uh, golden age technology. Um, so, yes, of course, I'm deeply involved. Yes, yes. Well, we had uh, Ian Parks talk about it, and I think we're going to start seeing that, and it, it's going to be coming back online where as we remove this, this filter that has kept us misaligned from source, we're going to just start. I mean, it's going to become surreal because our, yeah. our, 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 our reality is going to be shifting. We'll be walking by with, was that there? And I'm noticing that here in Malta because there's some amazing structures that you just mm. know generated their own, their own source. And I'm like seeing it for the first time because our, you know, it's, it's reintegrating back into our holographic template. So, so it's, it's for some now, now you understand why, uh, as part of the post-war era, and I'm talking about post-First World War and Second World War, you now understand why it has been a seminal aspect of government and the multinational, multilateral landscape to, um, to desecrate beauty, to tear down beautiful buildings, and to infuse yeah. our infuse our cityscapes and our built environment with these kind of um, mortician kind of death cult postmodern no, yeah. buildings and constructs, utilitarian uh, Soviet cultural Marxist monstrosities. Why? 
in order to rob us of this incredible um, uh, innate capacity we have for the elevation of art, beauty, and consciousness, which is where the human soul wants to go. So we need to be very careful of what we're seeing also on the, on the high street and in the cityscape. We need to be very, very judgmental about those objects um, that have taken over our, our built environment. Yeah, yes, because in you know I see that especially in Italy you can see it. So you have these ancient, you know, ancient buildings like the the Parthenon, uh, and then you go outside of the city limits and you see these. They they're like uh, you know it's the uglification. I mean they're they're just like little stacked uh, coffins on top of each other. You know, and, yeah. and it's just amazing the contrast you can see it in front of you because these and where I am now the the uh, hypergeum the. The, those are healing centers. Though that architecture heals you as you as you enter, not just providing free technology, but it also resonates with your with your body. So, um, okay, well, gosh, thank you so much. What a stimulating conversation! I'm gonna well, let you, you go because we, we're 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 running out. I'm just gonna kind of wrap up here. But thank you so much. And, thank you. Um, so much love to you, Bill. Thank you. Okay, bye, Sasha. Okay, and uh, I'm going to wrap up now because we just went on and on with a stimulating conversation with Sasha, and I um, think he told you how we can get in touch with them. Sasha Stone, you know, just Google him, and he has his New Earth um, communities, um, you know, in Bali and and, and Bacalar, and, and visions for those all over the world. But um, <clears throat> so <laughs> I just want to say, Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. It was very stimulating. And I do want to tell you every day I'm getting more and more incredible cosmic downloads about Malta. And I'm going to talk next week more and more about it because it's amazing. I went into the hypergeum um, on uh, my birthday, which was Thanksgiving. Uh, you have to book it like months in advance. And it was so amazing. I just, it, information was just coming to me. And what's so interesting is that in a red ochre, you know, which is like the color of life blood, on the ceilings of these acoustical chambers are crystal spirals. And the goddesses, we were all, we would go in there and we'd tone, you know, the kava yasa and, and, and the tones to align and to maintain our earth in alignment to the best of our ability, even during the rough times. And that was her job, you know, to keep the frequency and the template of our planet, you know, healed and whole and, and in alignment with, with infinite source until of course it was taken from us. So I'm doing a, a retreat pilgrimage, call it what you will, uh, uh, the return of the goddesses and that will be okay february uh, 5th david ike's coming on the show and then that will be february 7th i believe to over valentine's day and, and then the 15th it's over but we're going to visit the healing this and talk about tartarian architecture of tapenu which is the church of miracles which really it's the most healing, incredible energy, uh, hypergeum, uh, some more of the goddess temples. And we're going to stay in my palace. If you're listening, you can't see it, but this is a three-story palace that just came to me and it's beautiful. And so please, um, you know, go to my website, www.infinitehuman.com and I'll do a newsletter, I think next week about it. And next week we will have a broadcast about that. So, um, so, okay, great. I got some info things from Facebook. Thanks guys for listening in. I know we live streamed this and, um, I got, I don't know where Matt is, but in, in my, hello, voice America, are you there? <laughs> I, I, am I, am I going to, uh, is it time? <laughs> Usually I haven't gotten any messages. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Infinite Human Talk Show with your host, Elizabeth Monroy. We hope today's episode has inspired you to join the new consciousness renaissance and be the change by reclaiming your true divine infinite nature within and becoming an infinite human and a co-creator of the new infinite earth. Tune in next week for another empowering episode. Until then... Have an infinite week.